Sit back in your seats, get something to eat, and watch this movie. Don't let the kids see it, because, well, let, let, we'll let you hear the, the, the um, video first. Thank you. All right, this week on Left of the Projector, we are talking about the first um, triple feature on the show. This includes the films Clute, The Parallax View, and All and uh, all the President's the Men. The Three Pete. And The Three Pete, yes. And they are all by Alan Pakula, and these are referred to as the Paranoia Trilogy. And joining me this week, I have Bryn, who is the host, co-host of Beep Beep Lettuce. Hello. Generation Loss and music. Oh yeah, I also have a band. <laughs> it's called Stay Inside. And uh, and well, you said you had a new record as well. Yeah, we do. We have a new record coming out. Uh, well, I don't know when this episode is coming out, but it comes out on the twenty eighth. Uh, probably after the. Fact. Oh, okay. So, so it'll, it's out. Ar- it'll already go listen to it. <laughs> yes, go listen to it right now. It's uh, you don't have to wait at all. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I've reached out about. I send you like a list of movies and you immediately suggested Parallax View, which I had not seen. The only one of these three I'd ever seen until this was All the President's Men. And you said, well, it's part of this paranoia trilogy. And like, all right, I got to do some research on this. All right. It seemed like a great thing. And so I don't know which which of these are your favorite. I'm curious. Uh, For me, it's 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 Parallax View. I mean, Parallax View is probably one of my favorite movies ever. I think it's fantastic. Ooh. Um, it's, it it's, really it's good. one of the least like, um, I, th- I think that's a little bit, I- I'm, I've been learning a lot about myself through doing generation loss, which is a show about movies where we don't take ourselves too seriously, uh, where it's like, I feel like I'm kind of weird in people want to be led by the hand a little bit. Um, and they want to be like, my attention is waning please, you know, show me something fun and exciting. And while I love a good entertaining thrill ride, like I'm much more tantalized by, by a sort of like mental, uh, mind fuck kind of thing. You know, like I like things like the slow burn. Yeah. As long as it's interesting, as long as there's like a lot of interesting concepts being, uh, explored, um, and the formal aspects are really good. Um, I don't need like, I don't always need like fast paced dialogue or action or whatever. And I feel like I'd always heard that lots of people's favorite of this trilogy was Clute, um, mm. which is the one I saw later, um, the last. Um, and I get it because it's sort of the most like snappy, like, uh, you know, Twist and turny, lots of action, lots of suspense, very Hitchcocky almost. Um, and and I don't know. I mean, I thought it was fun, but it's like for me, it just feels like a little bit like I'm eating candy. Um, <laughs> little little empty calories, which is like totally fine. I love candy. Give me John Wick or you know the Pirates of the Caribbean or whatever. Like I love a, I love a stupid movie that's fun, but like especially when it has this sort of pretense of like okay you're watching a serious adult movie uh and we're we're trying to like say something to you like say something to me um otherwise i feel like my time's being wasted a little um clue yeah. is an incredible film i'm not talk i'm not talking shit on it i love all three of yeah. these movies but like for me i thought that the i liked i still like parallax view the best yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, they're all just as like a very quick, super like Wikipedia snapshot of the three. Clute came out in 71, Parallax View in 74, All President's Men in 76, and Clute, the stars Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland, and Jane Fonda actually won an Oscar for Best Actress in this movie. So it is a, a I didn't think you were saying it's a bad no, movie, no, of course, it's a great but movie. <laughs> it, I, I could certainly, it, it's very, um, it's, it is of all the three, it's like a slow burn. It's very Hitchcockian is kind of a good description because it's super artsy, but not like in a derogatory way. It's just the sh- the, sh- the shots and everything is in shadows, and most of the action is in her apartment, and basically follows her uh, meeting Donald Sutherland, who's a 
police officer who's looking into, or private detective, looking into his friend's disappearance. And he comes across Jane Fonda, who is a sex worker. And it kind of goes from there. And then Parallax View is more, I don't know. I, I, now that I, I was thinking Clute might be my favorite of the three, but maybe just because I've saw them all in, in, in a row and Parallax View, I haven't seen quite as many stars, Warren Beatty. And it's more of a, also kind of a slow burn. And it really is, this movie is like, when I think of like the seventies and thrillers or this kind of movie, like this is now I could see this being like at the top of that list of just, I don't know. It's, I I was kind of, I think it's as good as conversation. Uh, If not, I mean, conversation is like, have you ever seen conversation? But no, I actually have now. You gotta watch the conversation. Highly recommended it. Uh, also one of the best movies of all time. But uh, <laughs> uh, The Conversation is another sort of paranoia movie uh, about a a surveillance expert who's played by Royal Tenenbaum, whose name is escaping. Gene Hackman. Oh, it's a, this is the Gene Hackman movie. I, the, I have seen this movie. With, it's uh, Francis Ford yeah. Coppola, right? Okay, okay, sorry. Oh, so you have seen it. I retract my statement. I have seen okay. it, yes. That's a great movie. Um. I feel like Parallax View and and Conversation are very similar. I think that like, um, I think Parallax View is is it's just so much more accurate to the way things work. Uh, on like a, it's like you rarely get to see, you rarely get to see webs of power functioning the way that they function in real life. Um, in such a horrific presentation, um, this movie feels like a nightmare. Like, <laughs> like you're just like constantly because like Clute is a taut thriller. Like when when we first there's that one moment in Clute when um Donald Sutherland like is like come with me to the bed and you're like not sure what's going on and he's like making her pretend to give him a blowjob and he's like there's someone on the roof and <laughs> it's like your your stomach sinks um it's really scary and there's a lot of tense like serial killer thriller stuff in the movie but like i feel like the parallax view is just like curdling horror that gets worse and worse as the movie goes on you're like oh he's never getting out of this <laughs> yeah I mean, he's he's in, he's in over his head right like the the thing about that movie is like i'll kind of sketch out slightly with parallax view to kind of if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go see it. But it, the yeah, like the very first scene of this movie, <laughs> yeah, like it's the, it's very unsettling in the be- like they're not unsettling. I guess it isn't selling. Sure, I take that back. Like you have a shooter. It's like it starts in the Space Needle in Seattle, and a politician who's like you know a JFK, RFK kind of, you know the in that mold is shot, assassinated, and we flash forward three years later, and Warren Beatty, who's a newspaper writer, is looking into. You know, not really even looking into this anymore. And then one of his uh, kind of loose friends, a woman who is ex you know, definitely afraid of getting, yeah, is, is is definitely afraid of getting that she's going to be murdered for looking into the 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 what happened actually happened at the you know um, the shooting. And so he's kind of, uh, oh, you're a crazy woman. I'm not going to listen to you. And then slowly he's brought into the fold and he starts peeling back the layers. And as you're saying it, like it becomes almost unescapable to is it really even fiction like is this other <laughs> yeah, than maybe no, like is... the crazy except for maybe the crazy weird video they show later to recruit people into the parallax view other than that i'd say it's pretty much just how corporations in america work yeah well, specifically like t- the the corporation the intelligence agencies um yeah i mean like i i have i'm not sure if that video i mean the video is a artistic representation of something like that you know like i obviously that's not it's so unsettling. it's not a real one and it's it's like designed to be unsettling to the viewer more than it is i feel like i love that that part because it's sort of a almost like i don't know kenneth anger sort of like Derek jarman like painting of the truth behind like american propaganda from the time um where you start to like blur the lines between the fascist propaganda of america versus the fascist reality of america and then it's like what exactly is the difference um 
that sequence is incredible. Um, but I, that has to that stuff has to be based on something, right? Like Kubrick and and C- Pacula yeah. are like clearly drawing on like <laughs> of something real. Yeah, I'm sure that there, are, you know, I mean, I think like think of like mind control or you know uh, all of the uh, experiments that the government did that we all know about later. You know, MK later. Ultra. I mean, for anyone who for anyone who hasn't even seen the movie, you could Google or go onto YouTube and just search like recruitment video parallax view and just watch the sequence. It's, it's worth five minutes of your time to do it. It's like five minutes. I think long, you should watch the really movie, long. but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if, at, at bare minimum, bare minimum, you should watch. If you refuse to watch the movie, you should watch. You should watch that. Part. Yeah, it's uh, but the the whole like I think I was thinking as I watched about, as I think about the three of them kind of in in uh in a row. You and we, Clute is like this, as you said. It's this kind of uh, or maybe the way I was thinking of it was kind of like this localized paranoia of an individual. This woman played by Jane Fonda is kind of just scared of everything around her. It's the early seventies. People are, you know, the government is clearly not, you know, uh, it's not that removed from JFK and we're not that far before, you know, uh, Watergate and all these things and people's, you know, just kind of just, you know, uh, they don't really trust the government and Jane Fonda's character is distrustful. And then you jump into parallax view and it's, like the conspiracy is not just at the local level where they're just like spying on you. Like when you're talking on the phone or when you go see, you know, uh, a call girl, it's everything you do is being watched and everything is being controlled by like your people on a, like a chessboard. Right. You know? Exactly. You're just a, <laughs> your every action can be used to, against you. Um, I, I, and that's, that is what's scary about Clute, and I like that. Cl- so yeah, Clute is about a uh, a, a prostitute who, or sex worker who, uh, kind of becomes embroiled. A serial killer is stalking her, and all these movies are about someone getting embroiled, uh, <laughs> which is yeah. my favorite kind of movie. I love a good embroiling. Uh, and and Donald Sutherland is investigating the disappearance of his friend who was a CEO of a very large chemical company. So already you're sort of like, what's going on? <laughs> um, yeah. And I feel like it's... And not only that, but... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I just... I, I think the most disappointing thing about Clute is that there isn't much after that. It's like, okay, they he was a big, powerful person, but it's like, is there anything else to that yeah he's just he's really just trying to prevent anyone in the corporate world from learning that he likes to go you know visit new york and and see you know uh call girls or whatever and it's i i I would agree with that i feel like the maybe it's like a slight letdown a little bit as far as the ending concern and i was also thinking about it as um uh what was i gonna say Oh, I, 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 whatever. I, I, I lost it. But the, the like the parallax view does have something at the end. And I mean, to spoil the ending of this, as Warren Beatty and his like magnificent hair slowly <laughs> get be- embro- you know, embroiled, as you said. Yeah, his his hair is like another character in this movie. <laughs> it's it's what it's like poofy. And it's I don't know, Warren Beatty at the time when he was just kind of in his uh, heyday in the 70s, early 80s. Yes. But the he like slowly gets like gets taken into this. He even then decides, okay, I'm going to pretend to take an exam for the Parallax Corporation to become a member, and essentially you're becoming like an uh, assassin. And the other thing that I noticed about the Parallax view that was intriguing, and maybe it plays into that ridiculous montage that they show you as you're being recruited, is they're clearly are like going for people who are what I might even describe as like incels or people who are kind of feel like they're excluded from society like they're weirdly recruiting people who are just like in the margins already already believable that they would do something kind of upsetting uh or or you know something violent um i think that's what's so interesting about the movie is that at the end of the movie he's the one they pin the patsy on and yeah. he didn't do anything. Like all he was trying to do was discover who killed someone else, and and through their the machine that he's trying to explode, expose, 
they're able to do another assassination and pin it on him and ruin his life and literally kill him. Um, and, yeah. and, and what's so what's so smart about that is that mine the Manchurian candidate concept is useful to them. Like it doesn't even have to be real. They don't actually have to be able to control anybody's mind, even if they are able to. It doesn't really matter because they can control everyone else's mind. Like they're able to show to form the narrative around and I feel like that's what's really cool about the the five minute montage sequence is like what it's really about is not like we're able to control reality. We're able to control your perception of it. And so yeah. they're able to take him n- and not get him to kill anybody. He has only the best of intentions of just like uncovering the truth and then twist the reality around people to be like, that guy killed somebody by himself. We didn't, we, n- we had nothing to do with it. Obviously, why would you think we had anything to do with it? <laughs> And I love how in in the movie the I think it's maybe like because I there's like the flash forward after the first kind of fifteen minutes then it goes three years ahead they show like a panel like Congress presumably being like oh we did this review of what happened and we didn't find like we couldn't figure out who it was or it was this lone person yeah. which is like very much like the JFK you know playing in and then at the very end when they when Warren Beatty is like the Patsy, they have the same little committee. It's like in a dark room and you see their faces and it's like, oh, he acted we, alone. We, we, we found we, no evidence. We, we, he was alone. Exactly. Nut. It's like the lone wolf. And so it's just, it is true. I guess that's a good way to maybe look at that montage. It's not necessarily, it, it's almost like they're propagandizing the, the, the society because it kept showing like American flags and, you know, mothers and like being like, oh, patriarchy is good or I don't know, whatever they're kind of, going for and it it just it's you have to watch it to uh to appreciate the the awe-inspiring and he's just sitting in like a chair in a giant room like every it, we haven't even mentioned that both clute and Parallax, i mean all three of them but clute and parallax view like the cinematography is out of control is top it, shelf <laughs> i mean it's uh gordon willis who did like the Godfather series. Um, he's done countless great movies, and yeah. it's can't cannot be said how good the cinematography is. No, it's incredible. And also, one thing I noticed this time was how good the editing was. Um, the editing in Clute is um, really, really um, patient and, and specific. Um, like the beginning when she's like. Uh, interviewing to be a model or whatever and they're just like going and that's all like one take and then like where they where they cut to her walking away into the city it's hard to describe but it's so patiently and carefully directed and edited that movie and then parallax view is like full of like weird disorienting mistakes I don't know if you noticed that, but like that it it at at a certain point I was like, oh, this is on purpose. Um, like when the dam breaks and the the cop is gonna shoot him, there's like multiple like jump cuts of the water, like like it's supposed to be like a David Hockney photograph or something. They had to be like you can't do that in accidentally. Like that's just yeah. And then like at the end when all the 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 Warren the fake Warren Commission or whatever is like saying that he killed uh them on his own accord and no conspiracy was involved they just like snap out like they they literally cut and they're all gone and it's just the bench um really bizarre stuff that i hadn't like noticed before but it's like it feels like intended to just make you feel really uncomfortable (laughs) yeah and then you couple that with like the music which i mean again in all three of these i think more so parallax you include like the music is very foreboding and makes you kind of feel uneasy as you're going through yeah Yeah, i mean really they're just like master master class in in really everything like the script in both is good and i can certainly as you're talking about Parallax Viewer, as we're talking about it, I can see why it may be like a smarter film. I haven't decided whether it maybe I like it better. I need to see it maybe sure. uh, another couple of times. But it's, and we haven't even mentioned the third one of this, which I think is probably the most well known of the three. <laughs> it's All the President's Men. It has, of course, Dustin Hoffman, Robert Redford as the, you know, um, portrayal of uh, Carl, Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, The Washington Post, uncovering the Watergate scandal. And this is, like, I have to say, as far as a movie that's about um, journalism, there's no like 
really anything exciting that happens, but somehow they keep you like very well. You, I don't think you're bored when you watch this movie. I mean, maybe it's a little bit slower than the other two. I don't know. Oh, so what's you, what were you saying about it being a movie about journalism? Oh, I mean, do you, like it, it, it might be like slower paced. I mean, there, there isn't like action, I guess you could say. I'm using air quotes as far as in like all presidents, man. No, for sure. But I think this one is the most entertaining. Like for me, this was the one I saw first. Um, Same. I saw this back in maybe college or high school, high school or college. I can't remember now. Um, and this one. Uh, so I've, I have complicated feelings about it because I love it. It's an incredible film. I think it has the best acting and best script. Um, not surprising because it's written by William Goldman. Um, who I don't know if you, if it, the listeners know, he did The Princess Bride and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, um, Marathon Man. He's he's like he's credited with like a gazillion ghost rights on like all of the coolest movies you've ever heard of. Um, he's he's like the fixer. There's there's a there's movies actually about him. Like he's not ever named, but like he's the guy they bring in when something isn't working to fix it. Yeah, if you go to Wikipedia and it, like, there's a section under like consultant, yeah. and it's like a few good men, extreme measure, goodwill hunting. They like bring him in to like repair, you know, and make it yeah. make it a, a coherent movie. Uh-huh. And uh, so he's just an incredible writer. So this one is written by him, and so it has that really snappy, fun Hollywoody, like really tasty dialogue. Um, and it, but it's still Pacula. It's still impeccably directed and cut and and paced um there's hardly any music in the movie i mean i know i know uh there is some but like i think about the beginning or the the final sequence where they're in the room and they're just typing (laughs) and like the the climax of the movie is them silently typing uh and that's it uh so music is good but it's it's the silence is sort of more exciting i think in this one yeah the only thing I would say that I that like my only critique of this one is like the last I, I mean, I guess it's it's like an hour and thirty, a hundred and thirty eight minutes, so two hours and eighteen minutes. Like it's it couldn't be longer, but I almost feel like it ended on sort of like they've gotten them, they've discovered them, and then they just kind of had to do the typing, as you said, and now we kind of see actually what happens. And I've I don't know, like I don't it's almost like you wanted some like action of like people getting arrested or like a montage of them being on like a, you know, a, a hearing or something. I don't know. I'm like nitpicking because it's still a great movie. <laughs> no, I, I think that that's fair. I think that if there's anything that I so I just like the movie a lot. I think it's one of my, you know, I, all the these three movies, I would say, are like hard to pick where they would even slot in in my favorite movies. Like I've been a long time fan of this movie these movies um and like i said i saw this one in like high school so it's like really nostalgic for me um i think the thing about this one is whenever i watch it the fact that it is about something real um Mm -hmm. and sort of became the narrative of a real conspiracy um that happened (laughs) and like what people know about this conspiracy is this movie like i refuse to believe that the majority of americans know anything about that the watergate scandal except for what's in this movie uh and so you (laughs) uh you kind of have to it's really hard because you can't really critique it for not being a history book um but at the same time you, I kind of do where it's like it's like when you come out of this movie like what exactly happened like what what even is the Watergate scandal like it's sort of hard to even understand what happened because I think there's a lot more a lot more information that is revealed in like a movie like Nixon <laughs> uh, by yeah. Oliver Stone um, about why the CIA wanted Nixon out and why Nixon didn't trust the CIA. And that stuff is just like, isn't in the movie. Um, and that's unfortunate. I wish there was a little more like political uh, context for like why this cover up happened. Um, 
and what Bernstein and Woodward would have felt about it. In my personal opinion, Woodward seems like pretty spooked up himself. So it kind of makes sense that he, yeah, this is not uh, the most like anti CIA movie that Pacula made. Um, so it's hard because like politically, I have some nitpicks of the movie. Movie wise, I think it's fantastic. I and and I guess the other slight nitpick is that it makes journalism look too cool. <laughs> and like, and also they make it seem i don't want to say easy but like kind of easy where they're like oh everyone like at first you do they do make calls and like someone won't talk to them and they have to you know kind of trick them and these little things and it, it does make it look really cool and it also makes it seem like they're able to get things quickly and i, I would also agree i i think that the politics of this of, of the third one uh all president's men is a little bit, I don't know. It's definitely more, I don't know. Now that I think about it, being that this is like a political podcast about movies, I don't, <laughs> I don't really know how I even like think of it in like a political sense. Like, even though that's usually how I'm watching it. I don't know. What do you, how do you really? like, I'm curious what you think. I mean, it's kind of like liberal-ish. I yeah. I mean, that's what say. I mean. So like I, when I was in college, I went to uh, the museum. Do you remember the museum? Uh, oh, yeah. and like, I'm from, I'm from uh, Washington. Okay, DC. great. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know, uh, the museum was the most liberal jerk off uh, of, you know, things like Keith Olbermann or, you know, Walter Conkright of just like, these are our gods. And for me personally, like th the allure and the narrative around the brave truth teller uh, who sticks it to the government and tells the truth even when they're not supposed to, uh, like was very alluring to me as a kid. Uh, I saw Good Night and Good Luck by George Clooney uh, about uh, Edward Mur Murrow when I was in high school. And that movie was very inspiring to me because, you know, the idea of being like, you know, these people are trying to cover up something and we're not going to let them is like a good message. Um, but it kind of and and I don't know if this was the case at the time. I've heard about Good Night and Good Luck. Also really good movie even if I have problems with its pol politics. Um I really still like it a lot. And I, I'm I'm just very persuaded by the the sort of like journalist circle jerk. Um it's something I have a real soft spot for uh because I want it to be true, you know? I think it's really easy to want it to be true but um this movie kind of feels in the same vein of like journalism can change the government and not journalists are actually a part of the government and a really important part of the intelligence agency and it's like maybe that wasn't as much the case in the 70s um but i kind of don't think that's true i <laughs> i think in the 70s yeah, they were yeah. pretty like beholden to what the cia was allowed was telling them they were allowed to write that's that's exactly what i was i mean i when i when i the, my first thought as far as i mean i wasn't saying i didn't think of any political parts of it but the thing that i thought of me immediately is we're meant to believe that the power of the press you know is is so powerful that it can like take down a president which yeah. i guess you could say in this case it did but i think you're right is that the press does you know, is a mouthpiece for, you know, CIA, NSA, DOD. I mean, even in like those little meeting they have during the movie where they're talking about which stories they're going to run, they're clearly pressing on the things that are like meant to be talked about and the things that, you know, they aren't supposed to talk about and how they're going to frame it. So you don't really see the politics of Woodward and Bernstein in the movie that much. But right. if if you were knowing them now as humans, you know, they're like pretty like just kind of liberal thinking they're going to do well and, you know, bring these things to light, which I guess it did do. But at the same time, you know, there there is a problem with it, making it seem like the press is all good, especially when you look at now. It's it's just a joke. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I actually don't know much about Bernstein now. Um, I know that Woodward is very, very in-depth of being like a, in deep being a CIA mouthpiece. <laughs> at this point um and i think it's because like he doesn't he's a a sort of um a, a guy who doesn't think that the 
the systems are evil. He thinks the people who were in charge at specific times were evil or whatever. And, yeah. you know, he's not like coming to the aid of Cy Hirsch or whatever. <laughs> he's like, he he's very much in his, like, in his position now and isn't really interested in like challenging it anymore. Um, so I, I, and it's probably gotten much harder to, to like tell the difference at this point. Like if you ever believed that there was like some, you know, cover ups and stuff, it's like, especially if you really did expose one, you're like, well, I could do it again. I know how to tell the, the, the truth from a lie or whatever, uh, as though they didn't learn from it. Um, I don't know. I this isn't really about Woodward or or Bernstein personally. Uh, I just think the movie, while it's trying to, I think, be an entertaining movie that explains a fairly complicated topic. Um, it succeeds at the first one, and I think ends up being a little bit too pat about the second part of like explaining a very complicated topic. Um, which yeah. is, I don't know, again, like I said, I don't know if I really hold it. Like I wouldn't knock stars off of it if I was had to rank them or something. Um, but I think it in the parlance of, uh, the youth online nowadays, I'd say for me personally, Parallax View is more based than this movie. <laughs> yeah. I think that that, I think that that would be, I, I wouldn't have any uh, disagreement there. I think like that's like I think it's just the the difficulty of turning, you know, a book. So for all presidents men is based on Carl Bernstein's book by the same name, or I guess it's by both of them. I should say, yeah. not just one of mm-hmm. them. And they so, write it at the end of the movie. Know, for one turning, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for right, and for once, right, and for once turning that into a, a, a movie that's exciting and like a political thriller throughout is a, impressive in its own right because, as you said, like it's a very complex topic and all the things that they go through they don't even really explain you know they don't even really talk about like what the creep you know is like which is the committee to really i know they mentioned a bunch of times but they don't really kind of give you the whole thing they just kind of it's like you're a fly on the wall as they're doing their you know interviews and double checking and triple checking and sources and arguing with their editor it, i mean it's all very believable i think and very you know, compelling. But again, I think it, uh, it does leave that little bit to desire, as you said, like it doesn't really tell you what happened other than it's kind of like, well, it's just, it's like you, you delve into even like double deeper conspiracy theories when you're like, well, why did they break in? And, and, and people are like, don't really feel comfortable, like answering that question. <laughs> um, because there isn't like a consensus on it. I feel like the movie is trying to be, it's trying to tell a story about what did happen rather than present you with a theory of of what they yeah, think happened. Like JFK by Oliver Stone or something. Right, which I really appreciate and love that movie um, for at least having like, not at least for having a very thorough idea of like, this is why you should believe this. Uh, I like a movie that's a polemic. We don't get enough of those. Uh, <laughs> very, very few movies try to make you see it the way they see it. Um, especially if I already am inclined to agree with it. Um, I think that's very nice. Um, but this movie is not that, and it's not trying to be that. And so it's hard to like really criticize it for that. Um, but I, I, I agree. I wish there was some follow up at the end. And and you said it couldn't be longer, but I, I would watch another half an hour of that movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess if they did what I, what I would want to have more of like a little action montage or, going through like the you know a hearing where then they would kind of explain it that would have been a good way to bring in more explanation of what happened if they actually had the people who were arrested testifying and because they because everyone just started turning on each other is kind of what ended up happening someone just like in all these kinds of things eventually you're gonna not want to go to prison for as long and you're gonna (laughs) say who told you to do it and i mean the whole thing i mean yeah the (laughs) When uh, this is kind of an aside, but I, the when they first at the very beginning, when they're I think it's uh, Woodward goes to the court to see like the original uh, hearing, and the one of the the break in one of the people who broke into the Watergate is like whispering what he works at. He's like, oh, I worked at the CIA. He's like very quiet to tell everyone because yeah. you know you're not supposed to 
tell people you're at the CIA, you know, and <laughs> he is. And it's like that could easily have been a strand, as you I think you've already kind of alluded to, that that would have been really interesting to why was the CIA yeah. involved? What how, that I, <laughs> That's a story I want to hear. Yeah, because it's not really in the movie, weirdly. Uh, it's like it kind of ends up just being like, well, they covered it up because of there was stuff like a deep throat of the end is like because there's some other stuff that they wanted to cover up uh that could like involve the entire u.s on child community and it's like what what was it though uh and i mean in i think we all know that it was like the jfk and mlk assassinations and like the bay of pig like nixon says and nixon the whole bay of pigs situation uh <laughs> like that's there but they like don't go into it um so i think it's fun because you can sort of like you can still have the sort of knowledge of what really happened it's just i would i would encourage other people to read more about the watergate scandal and and specifically more about the jfk assassination and and the bay of pigs and read the devil's chessboard a movie that i wish was a hbo show <laughs> Yeah, or uh, the uh, the first season of, or is it the first season, the second season of Blowback, which oh, goes sure, into yeah. the whole, yeah, With that's Castro. like, I mean. I'm, is that yeah, the first I mean, one the, or is that, no, the first one is. Uh, no, second, first one's Iraq. Yeah, yeah, the first one's Iraq, uh-huh. Uh, that that show, I mean, talk about uh, getting deep into the whole yeah. thing. I mean, <laughs> obviously it's about, you know, Cuba and all of that, but it really gets into the tie-ins between Nixon and JFK uh -huh. and all of it. It pulls all those things through. And yeah, like that would be a great movie. I would love to see a movie about, you know, a movie by someone more left, like even Oliver Stone about Bay of Pigs or something. I would love to see a, a, a Pacula style. I, I think if you gave me a hundred million dollars or whatever, and you, uh, said i can make whatever i want it would be a like pacula worship uh hbo season uh, of the devil's chessboard just like about alan dulles's life um because it's horrifying a movie like in this vein about that thing would be would be the pretty... devil's chessboard is that that's my whole thing i really want to make that i hope that would that would be great have you ever read that book? I actually haven't, but it's on my Goodreads okay, list. Okay, so you, you know about it. Both. It's it's becoming yeah, it's, more uh, popular. That's great. <laughs> yeah, the I don't know when. I think it was must have been when I don't know when I heard about it, but it's some. I think it was just going through like all these books that I you know need to read, and I, I think it 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 goes. It's not just the Bay of Pigs, right? It's like just about the CIA too. Uh, it's about the yeah. It's about the uh, Alan Dulles and and the beginning of the cia he's the, he he okay. became the cia director during from uh after oh gosh it's like from the 50s to 63 okay the the in in, in the light of because you mentioned the dulles brothers another great book brothers this is is yeah, bro, yeah you knew i was gonna say it the uh <laughs> yeah. kinzer uh book which is also fantastic in in insane uh as you go through and you just like you're just comp you're it's yeah this isn't a book podcast but <laughs> everyone should read both of should read that book and other Stephen Kinzer books are all also great well you know it's interesting because I feel like I you know if you if you have any sort of um so one thing I wanted to talk about on on about all of these things is is the temperature of the 70s right like mm. I think yeah I think what's hard to grasp as someone who was born after the 70s were over is like i think i as a kid in the 90s like when i saw when i saw uh all the presidents men i was it was like the, it was like the 2000s and nobody i knew or had ever heard of like thought anything about the jfk assassination other than it was like kind of a reference that people would make as like a joke or whatever but I feel like in the last 10 years, maybe, like maybe five years, lots of people have started to re-appreciate what happened or like re-investigate. And like the, 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 the general consensus among people, it seems, has gone back to the 70s, which at the time was that people were pretty confused and seemed to think that a conspiracy theory was very possible. 
not a con- that a conspiracy did happen. Um, and yeah. that wasn't like a weird thing to think. It like became a weird thing to think as media about conspiracy theories and like how they're crazy and people who people who are conspiracy theorists have chains on their refrigerators and believe in aliens and tinfoil hats and the yeah like. yeah like that that was a process in and of itself of like starting with jfk that like if you believe that well you also probably believe in reptiles and you probably believe in uh you know ufos and bigfoots and stuff and all kinds of other stuff that like doesn't make any like doesn't matter to anybody and challenges nothing in power i feel like that was a large push through the 80s and 90s to make it seem silly and i mean distract you i mean it's like to get people being yeah i mean yeah to distract people to other things to socially shame you from questioning the official narratives around these things uh and now in the 2020s i feel like we're back to the 70s because there's so much information not everyone's fingertips and everyone's talking about it uh and 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 no one trusts the government anymore like not even a little bit because we're out it's like 10 percent uh like approval of congress or something ridiculous yeah i mean why would you uh i feel like the and that's i think a good thing in the long run but it's like it is interesting that like when these movies were being made, it was 10 years after it was 10 years after the whole country watched the government lie to their face about like one of the most horrific things they'd ever seen. Uh, Cause it wasn't televised or anything like, or it, like it was just like came out and people were like, Oh, the news. And then like the Zapruder film came out years later and people were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's not what ha- that you said happened you said something else happened it also confuses people right because you don't know what to believe at that point you're like oh the government the government's good and that's also like the government will come out with some new information that's been released like archive or something and like you know oh it's this thing and then it, it most of those things are served to reinforce just the lie upon lie that they already have and yeah i, I mean the 70s so the first time I saw All Presidents Men, I think I was also in high school. My mom loved this movie. Uh, and so she, I think I watched it with her. And she also was like one of the people who not thinks about JFK all the time now, but at the time was like, this is kind of strange, this whole thing. Sure. And so I think there were people who were like that. But over over time, especially the people at that age, you know, boomers now are like, you know, they were kind of lulled to sleep by commercialism and their... Sure being able to own a house and all the like. And so now the young people or millennials or whatever, or the thing like, Oh, the government is, is lying and everything is a conspiracy. But then as you get deeper, like actually it's not a conspiracy. It's just, that's what it is. Well, yeah, it was. Well, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy reality, like a conspiracy yes. happened. Uh, and like the entire country is a conspiracy. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a small yeah. group of people like dictionary definition, right? Like it's just a small group of people, secretly doing some shit to like attain power um yeah so it's it's uh it's interesting how in parallax view you start off with uh joe being like a like (laughs) they like make him one of the people who is like i'm tired of talking about it like okay even if it these are all explainable things and also if if it did happen like so what like what what does that mean then uh and that was one of the things that i think was really hard hard for me when i was younger like okay if jfk did get shot like who gives a shit what does that mean um and it isn't until you do a lot more research like even watching jfk the the oliver stone movie it's like it isn't until like halfway through the movie where they're like wait a second that would mean like a military coup happened in the country to like remove democracy (laughs) and it's like I think people don't want to believe these things to be true, right? Like you want to be more apathetic about yeah, it. Yeah. I, I mean, you'd rather just like be like, well, what am I going to do about it? I mean, that's kind of the conclusion you have to come to anyway, because it's like, what are you, go- what are you going to do about it? Um, but it's, it's interesting when it's kind of thrown into Joe's lap in the movie and his friend dies, like she's crying and being like, I think I'm, they're going to kill me. And he's like, no, no. And then it like hard cuts to her dead. <laughs> and, and, uh, in the, on the stretcher. And it's just like, Oh shit. 
uh, well, <laughs> I think we have to do something. And he wants to know. He wants his curiosity kills the cat in that movie. And what's the other crazy thing about Parallax View that is worth mentioning is that they several of the people who had been investigating it died of, you know, like uh, heart attacks. And they specifically talk about how they the government had the ability to give you like a like a drop of something in your in your yeah, food or your drink that pill. would then yeah, cause you to have an impulse. Like they do it to the the editor of the newspaper. So it's it's just like this you're like you're like powerless. I yeah. mean it makes you watch this movie and you just feel you feel as you're saying like you are, you know, Warren Beatty and just you have you're just one guy at a newspaper. Like what are you gonna do? Right. I mean, I feel that way um, every time I, I mean, I remember, um, what was it, in 2014, uh, like after the Ferguson murders and like a year after that, or the Ferguson murder of Michael Brown, um, and there was like, Ferguson protesters keep winding up dead, like, like pro people who are leading that protest just like start like having bullets in the back of their head and their car on fire. Um, and it's just like, well, no one can really... Like it's they're very clearly killing people who were like trying to organize against the police in that city, and there's no like what are you going to do about it? And they're doing it again now in Atlanta with like cops. Yes, city. yeah, exactly. Dying. Um, and, and I think I think what's scary to people, and you should be scared. I mean, but it's like I think that what's annoying and and very difficult to wrap your head around is like I think. Le earlier this decade there was a moment where a lot of people were like oh communism cool like we will just do that like we'll just organize and have some protests and like what you're not what they forgot to mention is like you'll be killed like you will straight like we had this in the 60s and 70s and they will just come to your house and kill you in your sleep and your family will never be able to like claim your body and that happened to all of the black panthers that happened to martin luther That's king even if you were on tv and famous like it doesn't matter like you're not allowed you have to fight a literal war like a revolution is a war so unless you're ready to like pick up a, a have a thousand friends who are willing to pick up an AR-15 and like storm police office. Like you're not going to do anything. Um, and that's very, very depressing to come to terms yeah. with. Well, I think that these movies like really, I mean, I guess all the president's men does give, give you the impression that there is the ability to take down some aspect of the government. But I think you said before, it's like, well, yeah, the bad actors are the ones that go to jail and like things are going to be fixed when they just put a different Nixon in. He could be George Bush or Ronald right. Reagan. It doesn't matter. And, you know, you can kind of look at it in a in a more pessimistic light. Like, I mean, there is a there is a way to read uh, all the president's men as like a a brave truth teller, liberal, you know, journalist jerk off. But like at the same time, like we also live in the real world and like know what really happened after that. And the answer is like nothing. So, like, in another way, you can kind of look at it as, like, well, <laughs> uh, they did all this work to try and find the truth and, like, kind of found some of it and, like, kind of fucked up their whole lives trying to do it. Uh, well, I guess they didn't because, like, Woodward, at least Woodward is is very rich and famous now. Um, I don't know. It's a, That one's a really interesting movie. Um, it's also just, like I said, very good. So, <laughs> but it is an interesting place for it to end. Yeah. I mean, again, it is. I mean, again, as we've been saying, like all three of these movies, I mean, you have, you know, they're all, I mean, anyone who hasn't seen them, like, again, it's pretty obvious that we, we would say go watch Flute, Parallax View and All the Present. I, I mean, I think it's almost is worth watching them in like the order that they were released. I mean, I think it's cool. I yeah, I hadn't actually done it before. Uh, it was cool to yeah. That was the first. The first yeah, that was. Uh, did you watch them in order? Yeah, yeah I did the same thing. I, I I well, I watched Parallax View, and then I watched Clue, and then I watched Parallax View again, and then I watched all. Oh Prisoner. wow! So I kind of like reversed it like different times. Like when you first mentioned Parallax View, I'm like, all right, I got to see this movie. Can't believe I haven't seen it. And then I watched it and like, okay, well now I should watch them like in order and. uh I got much more from Parallax View as far as just as I watched it, I just felt just confused and 
you know, like the last, I think we talked about the, the end with, you know, the, uh, the, him, be, him being a patsy, but that last like 20 minutes of the movie is absolutely fucking bonkers. Like this, like, <laughs> I know <laughs> I watched it this, again this time. And like, it's so long, like, like the, the dread that is building up of like, you knowing what's slowly about to happen and like, just like hang on all of those scenes for so fucking long. Uh, it's, it's so mean. It's it's devastating. Like letting them go through the whole entire process. Like it's like <laughs> this band practicing and it's in this giant, you know, convention center. And meanwhile, Warren Beatty's like in the catwalk up there, like running around being like, what's going on? He gets locked in and, you know, then they, you know, the, the, the next assassination and then they just, they kill him and, you know, they can easily pin it on him. And it's the... Oh, well, yeah, he was obviously this crazy guy because he's been going all around all over the country and people have died along the way. The guy, the the cop died in the... Um... Yeah, he drowned in the river. Wait, did the cop, does the cop die when he goes uh, to the water, yeah. to the dam? Yeah, no. he died. He does die. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's... And then he has the to car fake chase his own death. there, too. Yes, he fakes his own death. Like, like this movie has everything. <laughs> yeah, like, there's... It really does. It has every, like, kind of action suspense you know thriller thing like an assassination yeah. a dam breaking you know a really awesome and awkward fight scene in a bar where like he orders a milk i don't know it's just it's like it's crazy <laughs> oh, yeah that part is that part is a really weird watching it this time i was like what <laughs> that was the weirdest part of the whole movie that's I think. one of the i think the biggest my biggest negative on the movie is the the extended roadhouse bar fight scene uh a little silly um but ends up being really important. Um, so I don't, yeah. it's whatever, but uh, it is fun actually. I mean, it's a fun fight scene. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that movie is like, it's as fun, I think as like the fugitive, which I love. I've, have you ever seen the fugitive with Harrison? Mm, oh Ford? yeah. Um, kind of feels like the fugitive. If it's like about a guy trying to uncover like MK ultra. Um, <laughs> Which he does, kind of, but he doesn't uncover anything. He just like gets MK Ultra. <laughs> and, and then everything he's like learned is like buried, right? Because yeah. like he never published any story, right? Yeah, and they killed his editor. They killed everyone. They kill everybody. Scorched earth. Yeah, and it's like the the creepiness of the people coming, you know, uh like that's recruiting him and these weird it's it's all very uh, it's just the, the 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 some of the scenes that made gave me like the most like queasy feeling is when he's going in and out of you know the parallax headquarters i guess like this giant kind of creepy oh, building yeah. that's clearly meant to evoke like the cia or you know something like it like langley or whatever and it's just it just he does i think there's one shot where he almost looks like an ant in comparison oh, yeah. to the building and, like <laughs> it, it gives you that perspective like this is literally you're you're gonna die. Cool hair. <laughs> have you seen uh, Inherent Vice? I have seen Inherent Vice. Yeah, I think that's the only other movie that does a really good job explaining. Not only I should I I haven't seen all the movies, but that's the movie that I think about that does a fantastic job really illuminating what power is like. Um, where the he he's sort of like a burnout of the 60s and then you have like this thing called the golden fang where it's like what is the golden fang it's like a literal huge building that is a is made of a fang and there's dentists in there and then it's also a boat that's smuggling drugs and also maybe sex trafficking and it's like it's all of these things at the same time and also none of them because like they, none of them kind of exist really and it's a uh, that's that's how f the the parallax company feels in this movie of just like this this huge unfathomable unfathomably large force that is also somehow like an intangible and like no one really is sure if it's if it exists somehow uh really fascinating that they're able to capture that in like one scene and <laughs> yeah, the parallax view is only an hour and 42 minutes and it, yeah like, it's a tight 100 this is a case where like it didn't need to be longer right i almost feel like they would they it, like was the right amount of of uh of just a right amount of movie. I think Van Heer Advice, I think, was one of the other movies you were mentioned as like potentially talking about. It's also, uh, I, I mean, if anyone hasn't seen that, you should definitely see that. The cast of that movie is like top to bottom insane. 
just yeah no i i mean that's you know if if we're gonna talk about <laughs> if we're, we don't want to go down to no i mean if i'm going on a show to talk about politics like those are sort of my like go-to like i think these movies it's like though like this trilogy inherent and vice and network i think are like getting really at the the core of the issue here oh yeah network is i have that an episode on that in like a couple months not not recorded yet but planned oh nice yeah in that's a, yeah that's a, a classic a classic movie and i think uh, i think some people kind of like forget about it it's uh oh 10 out of 10 it's incredible i, I mean we've basically gone through all of these and all the paranoia and all the things i think that the paranoia trilogy as it's dubbed you know in retrospect as the as they were i think i guess i didn't look up when they when like when that moniker was used probably after all three of them were released and like in retrospect but anyway they are all five star films that you should you should definitely go watch the first two clute and parallax you are like slightly harder to watch although i think clute might be on tubi now oh oh you mean i I thought you were talking about in terms of uh sitting down and watching them but you mean like accessing oh yeah i was saying like you should definitely watch them and access them you can there are also other ways to access these movies that I would, I won't tell you you should do, but you can do. Oh, that's how I would do them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's how I, that's how I got Parallax View. You know? Uh-huh. I think they're all on Wasn't... the Criterion Collection, so I don't know if that means they're on the channel. Um. Yeah. I think only one of them might have been. I think. I don't pay for that. But I mean, might. if you do, I don't, there's a way. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, these are all old movies. No one's getting hurt. <laughs> I uh I like to advocate but the the point of the mo- the the what the, the the talking about these movies is it's crazy that no one is really making movies like this like especially in the climate we're in right now like we need more like crypto communist anti CIA movies uh and Clute isn't one but the next two are and uh I think that I I just hope somebody in my lifetime, picks up the the Alan J. Pacula mantle because um, he's just this yeah. is so so good. There really aren't movies like they don't really make political thrillers. They might like make remakes where they like redid the Manchurian Candidate and what with like Denzel in the early two thousands, something like that. But <laughs> oh, they yeah. really don't make these kind of movies, uh, you know, political thrillers. And if they do, it's like you're on the side of the CIA, like doing something bad to someone else. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You like put... Inherent Vice is one of those, but it like takes place in the seventies and is written by, you know, Thomas Pinchon. So <laughs> it's like, I want to, I want to see a now one. Like I want to see one of these about the Ferguson protesters. You know, I want to see one of these about, you know, people like the CIA taking over Occupy Wall Street or whatever. <laughs> I guess the only one I can think of is um how to blow up a pipeline. Oh yeah. Which is is that know, I think that's the only one I could can... Is that uh it's not... a sort of uh this sort of vibe or is it just cool? I think it's just cool. It's not necessary I mean it is. It's uh you know a group of people I haven't read the book but I saw the movie just recently. It's it's very good. But it's definitely not um maybe the same as this. There's lots of in you know intrigue and and things like that i don't know i just think the the 70s really had the 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 peak of these kind of movies and i guess you did have some of these style films later in the 90s or in the 80s i think of like michael douglas movies from like the late like 80s the game. Or, <laughs> oh i fucking love the game david fincher uh yeah yeah that that's one of my uh a classic uh favorite of mine but yeah i don't know do you have any i don't have any last uh parting words on the the paranoia trilogy other than to go watch i think they're great i think everyone should watch them oh also one movie that's kind of similar that i think not enough people have seen is uh under the silver lake um which is directed by the guy who directed it follows um and it's sort of new but got dumped by a24 for unknown reasons but i think people really misunderstood what that movie was about um, but I highly recommend watching that movie uh, in the wake of Jeffrey Epstein and the Los Angeles homeless uh, crisis. Um, really, really fantastic movie. Um, Interesting. I just I just pulled it up. I remember hearing about this, but I think the only thing I heard about it was like, oh, it wasn't any good 
or something like yeah, that. Like, I, probably from someone who hadn't even seen it. It took me it, a while to watch it for similar reasons. Uh, I, 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 It took like three different friends being like, Bryn, you specifically will like this movie. Uh, and for me to like, all right, I'll th- give it a shot. And I loved it. Um, it has a good cast. It's, it's a movie uh, that is about, yeah, the way homelessness and the way homelessness works and why it works that way. Uh, I think if you go into it with that mindset, um, you'll get a lot out of it. And, and in, in terms of this conversation also has a lot to do with that. (laughs) So it fits into the, it fits into this mold. So I guess, I guess there are been a few movies in this vein, but they're like few and far between and very few and very different. I don't know. Like they're not like, you know, the kind of movies that they want to make that are blockbustery type, whether if it's not a Marvel movie or I don't know. Well, uh, certainly no. Or on, uh, based on some humongous I- IP, then they're not gonna not gonna. Make. I guess A twenty four does make some of those. Sometimes, so. sometimes they them. bury them. That's weird. I don't know. They must like it. Must have gotten bad. I don't know. I have no. I, I need to see it before. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Tell me what you think when you watch it. I will. But yeah. So, uh, but Bryn, thank you for coming on and talking about the Paranoia trilogy. And uh, you can find your other two podcasts on presumably. Wherever podcasts are downloaded, you can listen to Generation Loss and you can listen to BB Bledis and you can listen to my new album, Ferried Away, uh, by Stay Inside on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever else. Um, follow me on Twitter at Kinematography and you can get all those links from there. Sweet. Well, Bryn, thanks for coming on. You can listen to this podcast and the, those same places, not on your Twitter account, but on the internet. <laughs> I'll probably retweet and, this uh, when you post it. So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, I guess that would make, that would count. And then, uh, but I guess wherever you're listening right now, because if you're listening, you're hearing this, you can just subscribe there, you know, give it a rating, and uh, we will catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>